everybody. Welcome back to another Gaga Pandemic Gaga's Bible Study. Glad to see you again. Glad to have you back at my kitchen table. I love it when you're here. Now, yesterday we discussed, uh, or the last time, we discussed um, the three events that were going to happen the, and tried to get them in order and a little more understanding of them. The first coming of Jesus when he was born. The second um, coming will be when he comes in the air, what we refer to as the glorious appearing or the rapture. We discussed that a lot last time. And today we're going to start in the first chapter of Revelation. And we are going to touch on the third event that is the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this earth. So um, let's just jump, jump in and get started and see where it takes us, okay? So let's just say for clarity, for, for uh, helping us to understand and get things in order, the first book or the first chapter of Revelation is basically, uh, I'm going to call it like an overview. It's, um, it's the beginning of the letter that John is writing to the seven churches of Asia. And it begins with John, um, actually in chapter, in verse 4, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, and then it, he has his a greeting to them. And he, then he just goes right into just kind of giving a, a little bit of a summary or an overview to get them kind of uh, understanding what the letter's about. And that's in chapter 1. And then chapters 2 and 3 are the actual letters to the seven churches. Seven, there's, let's see, it's kind of like one letter, because Jesus tells him to write it like in a book. There's like one letter, sort of, but it's to seven churches, and it, and uh, there's folks focus on each one of the seven churches. And we will get to that next time, the actual letters, and see if there's anything in those letters which we can learn from and um, improve ourselves on. Um, we'll do that next time. But this time, we're just going to focus on chapter 1 and get ourselves started, okay? So let's look. The first thing is verse 3. Verse 3. I found this verse, believe it or not, now I'm 61. I found this first verse when I was a teenager. I would say 13, 14 years old. And that verse stuck with me all these years. And I still think about it. And basically, here's what it says. It said, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Now, I'll have to say, when I was a teenager, those first words, blessed is he who reads. <laughs> this prophecy, blessed are these, blessed, blessed, however you want to say it, are those who read the book of Revelation. And that stuck with me, and it stood out with me. And I thought, there's a blessing I can get from God just by reading. <laughs> I got so excited. And y'all, there is no telling how many times from that age on that I have read through Revelation and still don't understand hardly any of it. But that was not a prerequisite for getting the blessing. The blessing was that we read it and that we hear it when it's being read, that we pay attention to it. <laughs> and so I racked up as many blessings as I could as a teenager and young adult. And I look back on it now and I think, well, that's kind of comical. It's true, I mean, but, you know, I was doing it to get the blessing, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think the Lord um, understood as a teenager where I was coming from, I guess. And um, so I'll just leave that there. But it is, <coughs> excuse me, a promise from our Lord that just by reading this book that can be so confusing to us, um, just by reading it and trying, he will bless our lives. And I just think that's so neat. Isn't that sweet of him? Isn't that just like our Heavenly Father? Isn't that kind that he knew in advance that first 
John was trying to explain something that was going to happen. I mean, God knew by, back then it was going to happen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later. John didn't. He thought it may be in his lifetime. But God knew. And so he knew that John was going to be, I mean, this is just my mind thinking. He knew that God, uh, John was going to be trying to explain things that he, were seeing, he was seeing in, his, in this vision that the Lord gave him about the end times, as we like to call it. And he knew the only words John had to use was words that were natural to him and his time frame, you know? And, and so he did, he did the best he could with, with um, just like we're describing things now. We use words that we know and that others around us know, um, but they might not be exactly meaning the same thing as they will in another thousand or two years. You know what I'm saying? And so I, Jesus purely knew that. And I think that's why he gave us a blessing for at least reading it, for at least listening to it when it's being taught. Um, <laughs> I think he knew that. And I think it gave, gave him and gives him pleasure that his children will, simply because he asked us to, knowing that we probably could not thoroughly understand it, but he gave us a blessing for reading it anyway. And you know, I just, I love him. He's so kind to us. He really, thoughtful, he's thoughtful. And um, he's just a good, good father, isn't he? Golly, just think about that. Just think about that for a minute, how sweet that was. How sweet is it when you see a big old bear of a daddy sitting in the garage with his little three-year-old, four-year-old son working on something? That daddy knows that that little boy doesn't have a clue what he's doing, but he's trying. He's doing the three-year-old try. And daddy makes him proud. He's happy for him. He doesn't condemn him for not knowing what a ranch is and what a screwdriver is. He's just proud that he's got a son sitting there beside him, trying. And I think that's the way the father kind of looks at us when, when we get into Revelation. It's not that we understand it all. It's that we're trying. I think that makes him proud, not in a bad way, not a prideful way, but just a way that that's my child. That's my child reading the book that's so hard to understand. I am so proud of her. <laughs> and I'm so proud of her friends that came to her kitchen and are doing the same thing. That's great. So I love that verse, as you can tell. Now let's go on down to verse seven. John's gonna tell us, and the churches, he's gonna tell us kind of like what he saw. He's just, okay. He said, behold, he is coming with a cloud, with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him. Now remember, when he came for the rapture, to gather his children home, nobody saw him but his children. And I got a feeling by the time we see him, it's already going to be happening because it's going to happen so quick. But this time, this time, when Jesus comes back, every eye on the face of this earth, and I think at the same time, is going to see Warrior Jesus. That's what I like to call him. King Jesus. Warrior Jesus. Going to have a once and for all and done. And if you will look back in, um, let's see. Let me turn over here where I made a few notes. Yes. If you will refer back to Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. 
I've got it marked so I would so I could hurry up. Daniel ch chapter 7. Now remember, here he said, Behold, listen up, churches, listen up, folks, listen up, Christians. He is coming back with clouds, and every eye will see him. And here's what Daniel said long, long time ago. And he was having a vision. I was watching in the night vision. Dreaming, I guess. I don't know. And behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Coming with the clouds of heaven. One like the Son of Man. Daniel was talking about Jesus. Wow. He pretty well quoted Daniel in Revelation. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? And then go to um, Matthew. Matthew. Oh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Got it? Matthew chapter 24 and verse uh, 29. Matthew 24, 29. Here's what Matthew says. Actually, it's what Jesus said. It's in red in my Bible. Immediately, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Talking about the same thing that he showed Joe, uh, John. And another thing that this does in Matthew is it clarifies by Jesus' words himself that this ha will happen, this second coming, when, when Jesus will come back to this earth the second time. Remember the first time he was a baby? Second time he's in the air. This time, this time, he says it is immediately after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation. He gives us a time of exactly when this will happen. Now, we don't know exactly when the tribulation will start as of right now. The people who are left at the rapture will know exactly when the tribulation starts because it starts then. But we, as children of God, it, this tells us for sure we can even know that the second coming of Christ to this earth is immediately after the tribulation. And see, those who have studied scripture but are not Christians at the rapture, they will know what has happened. And they will know to come and look in Revelation or they might just already know because they have maybe stuck the scripture, at least heard it uh, preached, that they have now entered into the seven years of tribulation. And after seven years, Christ is coming back. I call him, like I said well ago, the warrior king is coming back. Let's go back. You know, we also see in those scriptures that it will be very publicly, very, like we said before, the rapture is um, done like a thief in the night. But the second coming is done, like I said well ago, for the whole world to see. No doubt about it. And I believe the moment the people see, they will know. 
confess Jesus Christ the Lord. And they will tremble. They will tremble. And the first thing he's going to do, and I may be jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but the first thing he's going to do is gather, because he will have some angels with him, and he will gather the saints, those who have been saved during the tribulation, and get them out of the way. Gather them to himself. And then the end of the tribulation. But that's later. Now let's jump on over. Let's see. Back to Revelation. Now, let's move on to flip this page back over. I gotta find my notes, girls and boys. Got to find my notes. <laughs> oh, Gaga and her notebooks. Oh, and this one. This one got wet on my front porch the other day when it rained. I was sick when I looked out my window and saw it left it sitting out there. It's dried, but it's lumpy, just like my hair is sometimes. Well, now let's go on to verse 13 through 16. And we are just going to start with verse 12. Then I turned around to see. This is John talking. Then I turn, and he's still talking to the, the churches that he's, as he's beginning his opening, he's opening his letter to the churches. He said, then I turned around to see the voice that spoke with me. Ooh, somebody talked to him. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the son of man looked like Jesus clothed in a garment down to his feet. Now here, here we get some insight, which is really cool. We're gonna get, we get a description of what warrior King Jesus looks like. So pay attention. This is what warrior King Jesus looks like. This is what the people on the earth are gonna see. Clothed in a garment down to his feet. And I, actually, I've pulled them out. And I'm going to just wear, he's wearing a long garment. I got this all out of these verses. A gold chest plate across his chest. Head and hair. Head and hair are white. White as snow. His eyes are look like flames on fire. His feet look like brass. His voice sounds like many waters. The power, his voice is powerful. You know how loud and, I mean, waters can, especially, uh, uh, what do we call them? Well, waterfall. How loud and roaring they can be. I think that's what Jesus' voice is going to sound like. He holds seven stars in his hand, his right hand. Out of his mouth, now get this, a sharp two-edged sword. What's, what's this good book to tell us? It's sharp as a two-edged sword. The Word of God. We know that. And he shines like the sun. He shines like the sun. S-U-N. He's a mighty, mighty warrior, King Jesus. Mighty warrior, King Jesus. And he's our father, y'all. He's our father. He holds us in the palm of his hands. That's who's holding us in the palm of his hands. That gentle daddy, that good friend who has felt all the emotions we have felt, and that warrior King Jesus who is stronger than, than any, including Satan himself. That who, that's who holds us in the palm of his hand. We don't hold him. He holds us. 
That's why we can have security of the believer. That's why we can be confident in our salvation. Because it has nothing, nothing to do with me and my works. Or my not works. <laughs> and it has everything to do with him. This warrior King Jesus has me in his grip. Ain't nobody getting anything out of that hand. Nobody. Nobody spiritual. Nobody, nobody. Think about that. Wow. Wow. I mean, gosh. I could just sit here and talk about that all day long. The powerful God. The only God. And he chose to love us so severely, so powerfully, so gently and lovingly, so fierce. Wow, we can lean on that for the rest of our lives. Gee whiz. And when he comes down, you think the wet people that's living on the face of this earth then not gonna notice? Oh, they're gonna notice and they're gonna know. And they're gonna fear. There won't be a doubt in their mind and there probably won't be a word coming out of their mouth. Not at that moment. Wow. He is Lord, isn't he? He is King. He's mighty and he's awesome. Wow, let's just sit here and talk about that. <laughs> I mean, golly jeepers. Golly jeepers. That sounds so like somebody from West Kentucky. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love him so much and I know you do too. Wow. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I can just sit here and talk about that, y'all. Sit here and think about that. Hmm, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Let's go on down as uh, John concludes this kind of beginning of his letter to the, of Jesus's letter to the churches that John is putting down. Um, let's, let's see his kind of conclusion to this. Here's what he said in verse 17. Now that's Revelation chapter one, verse 17. Here's what he said. And I saw him, Jesus Christ. I saw him don't you ever wonder what you're going to do when you see him? You know that song, I Can Only Imagine? Awesome song, isn't it? Awesome song. But haven't we all thought that? What will I do when I see Jesus that first time? What will I do maybe every time? I can tell you, I know what John did. He told us. He told us. When he saw King, warrior, Jesus. Here's what John did. He said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I think his power, his awesomeness, his deity was so and is so overwhelming to a mortal, a human being that God himself created that it will overwhelm us to death. Overwhelm us to death when the realization of what our eyes are seeing and it will be instant is the King of Kings and Lord of all the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Creator, the Redeemer. He's going to be more than our mortal minds, bodies, 
eyes can take and we will probably just all fall over as dead. And what is the reaction of Jesus when this happens? We know that too. John told us what his reaction was. But he, Jesus, laid his right hand on me and he said to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And at that point, at that reassurance, I think our personalities just might come out. At that reassurance, of Jesus, his warm touch of his hand, the words of his mouth reassuring us that, yep, you just saw me, the God of the universe, and you're mine, and I love you. Don't be afraid. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the one who was alive and who died and who lives forever. Wow. Then there may be some shouting, some dancing, some flip turning. <laughs> I got a feeling there's no tell, but it'll be a party. It'll be like a sudden release of everything negative in our life. And we will be flooded with his, his eternal light and glory. Wow, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see and I look him in the face. Whew, what a day. For you too, if you know him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a day. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, please, please consider it. Please ask those who you know love you and love the Lord. And don't stop asking them until one of them tells you all about Jesus. Whatever you need to know. And then accept him as your personal Savior. And then you better let me know, because I'll be very excited. And if I could turn a flip, I would, but I can't. But I sure can shout. I love you. Next time, we're going to check on what the Father and what King Jesus had to say to the seven churches in Asia that still apply to us today. And we will see where we're doing well and maybe where we can improve. I love you. Have a good day in Jesus' name.